Welcome to San Joaquin Spotlight, a public affairs program featuring conversations about life in the central San Joaquin Valley. This program is brought to you in partnership between KFSR 90.7 FM and CMAC Fresno. I'm your host, Sevog Tatiosian. Today we are at Annie Jam in Fresno, California. The San Joaquin Spotlight crew is out and about. We're here at the festival, so what's going on? Well, we're here for Annie Jam. It's a convention celebrating all things anime, Japanese pop culture, video games, animation, and some lovely vehicles as well. Pretty nice cars in there too. I mean, so this has a lot of following, wouldn't you say? It does. There is a very huge following, especially in the Central Valley, and it's nice that we have our own little convention here in Fresno to celebrate all those things. We don't have to travel across the sea to go to something, so it's really cool. And so who are you? You're dressed up today, and who are you? I'm the illustrious, the immortal, the ever-charming Captain Jack Sparrow. And so where can people find out more information about this event or about this idea? I mean, it's pretty cool stuff happening inside. I would say the best place to start off is go to any-gem.com. There's information regarding our vendors, our special guests, and all sorts of other things on there. Thank you so much. My pleasure. We'll be back after this. We are here at the Omni Festival in Fresno, California with Matt. Matt, what are you doing here today? I am here um, on behalf of my internet series called the DJ Mix Show. And what, what happens with that internet series? Uh, we go around to different cosplayers and we ask them questions like, how did you make your cosplay or did you buy your cosplay? Where did you get it from? How did you make it? What materials did you use? Are you enjoying this event? Did you want to see it happen again next year? We're kind of like an advertisement for different uh, social events around Fresno and Clovis areas. So who are you today? You're dressed up and it looks like a professor or something. Yes, I am Professor Oak from, po from the Pokemon anime and video game series. Okay, and what is your goal here today? I mean, what's going on over here? I am here to uh, take as many pictures and uh, video footage as much as I can. Incredible. Well, good luck to you. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. We are back with Jaisal and this fantastic car. Jaisal, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? So you own this car? Yes, I do. So talk a little bit about the pictures and what's going on in the car. Um, this is a 2003 Infiniti G35. Um, we do SEMA, car shows, a lot of charity events. And this is a culmination of about four years worth of work. So what exactly did you do to this car? Because you've got pictures, you've got in, the interior is all fixed up. Uh, I've done just about every possible modification you could do to this vehicle. Uh, we have anime figurines inside. Um, the art style is called Itasha. It stands for painful car. It's a, a trend that's in Japan and we're the first car club here in America to bring it. Um, we're called Team Love Hate. Uh, it's another car, we have a car outside. Uh, we've been doing this since 2008 and yeah we, we come out to cons and you know have a good time what got you to do this to the car because infinity is a nice car but you've made it nicer uh i think it's it's just one of those things where you just keep modding your car and you keep going you keep going uh we do the the big show in las vegas every year sema so yeah, it's where the best of the best cars go and i just wanted to keep pushing the car until i thought she'd be done by the way, how many cars have a video game playing device in the trunk? Because this is pretty cool. I, I think a handful in America. I've seen a Veloster that has one, and I think that's it. This is a unique build. The company uh, helped me put this together. Uh, it was really nice. So, yeah, it's pretty much one of a kind. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jaisal. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Let's take a look inside this vehicle. We are back on the program with Blue. How are you doing today? Hey, how are you doing? So wh who is your character? Uh, my name is Sinkin Blue. Sinkin Blue. And wh what show are you from? Uh, I'm from the Japanese tokusatsu show called Samurai Sentai Shinkenger. It's a part of the Super Sentai series. And so where can people find out more information about this uh, costume or the characters? Well, there's a lot of places. You can try Googling it or um, Wikipedia. I would recommend watching um, the Super Sentai 199 Hero Great Battle movie. It'll give you a great basis of what Super Sentai is, and it gives you a lot of information about past Sentais, and yeah. Is it hot in this costume? I mean, it's uh, you're wearing something that's tight on your body. 
No, not really. Um, the breeze really does hit me. I really do feel it. And um, sometimes I'm a bit cold. I'm more cold than hot. How, how come you picked this character? Is this your favorite? Yes. Um, Shinken Blue is uh, one of my personal favorites because um, I like his character, um, Ryunosuke. Uh, he's, a, he's, a really awesome, he's, a, he's a really great character, and I really do enjoy seeing him in Shinkinger. Is he a good guy or bad guy? He's good. And is this like a fighting cartoon, or what kind of uh, character is this? Well, this is a live-action um, um, superhero show, I guess. So it's a superhero? Yeah, live-action. Well, thank you so much. You look great in the costume. Okay, thank you. We'll be back after this. We're back with Vincent and Felipe. They are playing a game. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm here with the Madness booth, and we're playing this game. We're getting down. What's the game you're playing? Uh, Street Fighter 2, uh, the HD remix. So who's the who? Who's who in the Street I'm Fighter game? So far, uh, I'm the right one. Uh, <laughs> what are the names? Akuma and e Honda. Honda. Yeah. How long has it been since you played this game? Oh, it's it, uh, three years, a lot of years. So what's going on here today? Oh, uh, well, I'm just ha I'm just hanging out, wanting to beat him. He's getting his butt kicked. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys, have fun. We'll be back. We are back with Jocelyn and Gina. Both of you, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with you, Jocelyn. Who are you today? Um, I am Vriska Circuit from Homestuck in her fairy costume. Why did you pick this costume? Is it because she's your favorite? Vriska is my favorite from Homestuck. And the reason I picked this costume because I wanted kind of a challenge, like to make the, the actual dress instead of trying to buy and alter it, alternate. <laughs> so you actually made this dress? Yes, I did. How long did it take you? Um, I did it in my fashion class in high school, and it took me about a week. Perfect. Well, good luck to you today. Sounds like you're gonna have fun. Gina, how about you? What outfit is this? Um, I'm America from Italia. Perfect. And why did you pick this costume? Um, this is my favorite character, and it's just it's a lot of fun to cosplay as him. Where, when did you start watching or getting involved in this whole culture? Um, about two years ago is when I really started getting into anime. And then I met Jocelyn, and she introduced me to conventions. And it's just it's kind of carried on from there. So what do you two plan to do today at the convention? Are you, are you going to buy stuff, or are you going to meet new people? Um, there's meetups going on today, and it's like we get together with all our friends who like the same thing, and it's just so much fun. And also the vendors, yeah, we're going to buy from the vendors. How about you, Gina? What do you expect today? Just to have a lot of fun, you know, enjoy Anna Jam. It's basically all I can expect right now. Perfect. Well, you two, thanks for being on the program. Go have fun. Thanks. Thank you. We'll be back after this. We are back with Robert Axelrod, one of the speakers for today's conference. How are you doing today? I'm great. So what are you doing over here today? What's going on? Well, uh, some of you may know I do the voice of Lord Zed and Finster on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That's my claim to fame. Plus a whole gamut of other roles. Did Robotech, Digimon, uh, Spider-Man, and a host of others. Cowboy Bebop, Big O. How did you get involved in this kind of business. I mean, what, what made you say, I want to be the voice of these figures? Well, uh, uh, I wish I had that kind of control. I, <clears throat> I've been an actor all my life. So in 1980, I happened to run into an audition for uh, a cartoon called Banner the Squirrel. It was for very young kids. And uh, <clears throat> I got the role of Banner the Squirrel, the, uh, the lead role. And I did that show, I did 10 episodes, and that's how I cut my teeth on anime. So uh, 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 then the work just started coming in, and I, I, uh, I got uh, the first big job was Robotech. I did 35 episodes of Robotech, and then, uh, then uh, it just snowballed, and I started doing work. And I was also have worked quite a bit as an uh, on-camera actor and stage actor. Did you realize how big anime is before you got involved with it? Because just 
downstairs there are a ton of people most of them are dressed up this is an exciting culture did you realize that before you stepped in i had no idea <laughs> i had no idea until i started doing the conventions in 2008 that there was such a large following for this so what i mean what's your schedule look like do you travel from town to town talking about uh, what your work is doing well i i live in la and i work out of la and i i do maybe 15 to 20 conventions a year uh, where I go, I'm invited and I do panels, such as one coming up at, uh, in a little bit, and uh, I sign autographs and I meet with the fans and it's a, it's a lot of fun. What do the fans tell you? I mean, like the, this morning you were on stage talking and oh. people were talking to you. What do the fans tell you about your work and the characters? Well, it's mostly complimentary. They, uh, they say, oh, you made my childhood and you were my favorite villain. And uh, I rooted for you in the Power Rangers. You know, I was the bad guy. <laughs> but uh, I'm proud to say that uh, bad guys usually don't get that kind of following. But, uh, but I guess I did a good job. Now, talk about when you're doing these voices. I mean, it, you know, when you're making movies, you know, you do multiple cuts. You do multiple shots. When you're doing the voice of these characters, is it like that too or is it one shot? Well, usually it's one or two takes. Usually one or two takes. If do you one is particularly difficult? Maybe it takes three takes. Do you practice, or how does that work? I mean, you get the you get the script, and then you sit in front of a microphone and you do the part, or and who matches the voice to the cartoon? Well, it starts off with the writer uh, writing good lip sync, keeping the gist of the story. I've written 150 cartoon scripts. So I know the, know the field. Uh, uh, it starts with the writer writing a, a script that sticks to the story and sticks to the visual and also lip syncs with the uh, character's mouth flaps. So uh, if you get a good script, it makes it a lot easier for the uh, voiceover actors to, and the director to uh, put it on tape. And then you get into the studio, look at the script, and then it's fire away on, on, uh, on tape. So what, looking 10 years in the future, what do you want to be doing? Is this what you want to be doing, or do you have a bigger goal? Well, I'd like to get another series, uh, either on camera or, or a cartoon series, uh, or children's show series, like the Power Rangers wasn't a cartoon, but it certainly was a series, uh, and I did six years on the show. And uh, I'd like to get more feature film work. Did you realize when you were doing the Power Rangers how big it was going to get? I mean, for a period of time, everybody was talking about the Power Rangers. Yeah, that's true. I, we had no idea. We thought the show was going to uh, last maybe 26 episodes, a season or maybe two seasons. And uh, we had no idea it was going to catch on that big. So I see an audience waiting for you to speak right now, and we're cutting into their time. But... What are you going to talk to them about this morning? Well, this morning I'm going to screen some footage and talk to them about footage. It's sort of the best of Robert Axelrod. Some footage from the Power Rangers and other shows that I've done. Speaking of Robert Axelrod, how can people find out more information about you? How can they follow you? And how can they find out what you're working on next? Well, I'm on Wikipedia. And uh, you can look me up there or go to imdb.com. And that has my latest stuff. Lastly, welcome to Fresno. What do you think of our town? Oh, I love Fresno. <laughs> you know, I did an episode of, uh, several episodes of Young and the Restless here in Fresno back in, uh, I guess it was the early 90s. Uh, we've, the rare times that a soap opera uh, goes on location, I went on location and we, uh, we had a good time. We worked about uh, a week. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It's very hot. And looking at the audience, a lot of youth is here. What advice would you give them if they want to be a voice behind a cartoon or a program? Take acting lessons. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. We'll be back after this. We are back with Sebastian and Yuna. So what program are you from, Sebastian? I am from Black Butler. It is airing currently on Netflix. If you want to pick it up, it's a great anime. So... Cool costume. Where can I find a costume like this? They have sites that sell them, but also a lot of people put time and effort into it, making their costumes for months. So, Yuna, talk about your costume a little bit. Um, well, I'm from Final Fantasy X from the, for the PlayStation 2. Um, I'm a summoner for, uh, that has to go on her pilgrimage to save Spira, 
and I really like how her character development was and she kind of helped me get into the whole Square Enix type games and video games and kind of pushed anime in my life a little bit so it was really cool. So in Fresno if I wanted to join a club or be involved in these kind of programs where can I go because this is cool stuff. To be honest I'm not local I do a lot of traveling when it comes to anime conventions but what I do know is that we do have anime communities here in Fresno, back at home in Morgan Hill, California. So pretty much you can make your own, possibly. So. Well, both of you, welcome to Fresno. Thank you for coming. Sebastian, Yuna, good luck to you. Any, Thank you. Any jams here every year, same time, same place. Join us one of these days. Yeah, running our third year. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a good day. We'll be back after this. We are back in the board game room here at the Ani Jam, the anime festival or convention in Fresno, California. Here what's going on is a board game. What are we playing over here? Well, this is a card game, uh, the Lord of the Rings deck building game. Um, and this is in the game room. We just put out games, try to teach them, try to to other people so they would want to play this game. Is this a popular game, the Lord of the Rings card game? Just, us, us got to start it. And plus, us, us, we haven't read it yet. So you just started playing it? Yeah, and it's pronounced Annie Jam. Annie Jam. There you go. See that? Thank you for the correction. So how about you two back there? Every, how's everything going? Going great. Yeah, it's really good. So what's the objective of this game? Uh, to build the deck with the most power at the end of the game. Now, Lord of the Rings, this was a popular TV series or movie series, wouldn't you say? Book. Movie and book. And so now it's a board game. So does the board game compare, you think? Uh, it really depends on who you ask. Because uh, this is a card game. There's the board game that, that matches other kid games like uh, Risk. There's Lord of the Rings Monopoly. It franchises over to all the games that are accessible to anybody who wants to play it. And what do you expect here today? I mean, what do you want to do after this? Are you going to go play video games and stuff too? Oh uh, no, I work here, so I'm going to have to stay here for the <laughs> so rest of the So you're probably going to stay here. I How about you? I like playing video games. Games, games play, uh, this game, games so far pretty good, but there are some bad games. Games, games after a while, like corruption over there. Her, her, her lowers your points down oh, near the end of the game. Okay, folks, I'll get out of your hair and let you play your game. Thank you for talking to us today. Thank you. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. We're here with Clark. Clark is the owner of the white car in this picture. Clark, how are you doing today? Good. How are you this morning? Doing well, doing well. So what's going on here today? Well, we have the Fresno Annie Jam convention, and I'm up here with Team Love Hate, and we're showing off our Itasha anime cars. Um, uh, Itasha is an artwork. Um, uh, specifically created in Japan um, and uh, we're bringing it over here to the United States. So you have the white car that was just in the picture. What kind of car is that? Uh, that's a 2009 Toyota Yaris. Um, uh, bottom of the line Toyota but as you can see you can make uh, even uh, the cheapest car look good. <laughs> well, by, by judging the way the vehicle looks, that's not a cheap car. Talk about how long it took you to make the car look like that. Well, it's an ongoing process. Um, at this point, I've got about two years worth of work into it. Um, I mainly do uh, uh, performance uh, car shows. Um, the anime uh, shows is is a new uh, field for me so i'm just starting in this perfect well good luck to you well thank you very much i appreciate you taking the time out today we'll be right back we are back at the an ani jam the anime convention here on in fresno california it looks like we're here in the video game room with jonathan jonathan what's going on in here today um, well, what's going on here is that everybody, is, uh, as you can see, is playing video games. Um, I'm even playing a video game myself. And um, yeah, so like, everybody's just having a good time in here. What's the video game that you're playing? Um, this game is called uh, Dead or Alive 5. Um, it's like the, it's the fifth sequel to the original Dead or Alive games. And uh, so far, it's really exciting for me. I really like it. 
How, when did you get involved in playing these video games? Because I could tell you're pretty good at doing it. Um, I got involved playing video games when I was like five years old. When my, my cousin, of course, introduced me to my first fighting game, which was Tekken. So, yeah, I've been playing these kind of games ever since. And so you're playing this game. Which, one, which character are you? Uh, right now, I'm the girl in the, in the blue uh, kimono. And she uh, actually is one of the original characters. She's like the main main person. And is this also like Japanese uh, type of uh, programming or video games? Uh, yes, it is. And so, what's the point of this game? You you just have to beat up the other girl, or? Um, well, right now I'm not playing any serious games. I'm just practicing because, like, since this is my first time playing this game, and you know, I just want to get the feel for it. Is there like a, a competition going on here today as well, or it's just people playing video games? Um, well, from what I've learned is that uh, right now everybody's just uh, playing for fun, but later on in the day they're going to get up some real serious competitions. And are you going to be involved in the competition? Uh, if I get the chance, yes. Perfect. Well, thanks, Jonathan, and good luck. It looks like you're doing good on this video game. Thank you so much. We'll be back. We are back with Katie, one of the vendors, it looks like. Hey, Katie, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. So you're dressed up. Well, who are you today? Yes, I'm Judel from Magi. And why did you pick Judel from Magi? Uh, I feel his character really expresses the anime. It actually gives the plot line a lot more. So for people in our audience who have never heard of anime before, how would you describe it? Japanese cartoons, a lot more plot line, a lot more definition. The characters, you can just fall in love with them. A lot easier than regular cartoons. When did you get involved in this whole anime culture? Because it looks like it's actually a whole culture. Oh, it's a very old culture. I was involved my whole life. Anime was just something I always grew up with. As soon as I found cosplay, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to just sell my talent and express myself, get involved with the anime community. So what are you doing at this table? It looks like you've got some uh, nice uh, gadgets and stuff like that. Oh, I do. I'm selling embroiderings um, and plushies. They're all selling really fast and bags, anything I could do, keychains, artwork. It, and I heard that you're the one who actually did some of the artwork for this thing. Yes, I was. I did the artwork for the badges, lots of artwork in the programs, and the artwork on the bus advertisement. So when you're doing that artwork, how do you know what to come up with? I mean, is it uh, do, are you looking at something and drawing it, or is it all in your imagination? Oh, it's all in my imagination. I just feel it come out. It's like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. So what else uh, can people expect today here at the festival? You can expect everything from dances to cosplays. Everybody here is absolutely friendly. We've got interviews with voice actors and panels to do steampunk. It's very cool. It's very good variety. And does this happen regularly? How often does this happen? Oh, every year. For the past 10 years so far. In Fresno, every year? Yes. And I mean, what do you, while you come here every year, are you looking that it's getting bigger and bigger? Oh, definitely. We've got tons more people. We spread out. We branch out. It's very great. So how can people find out the, uh, who the cartoon is or the character is for the costume you're wearing? Can I Google it or something? Oh, definitely. You can Google it. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, for your time. Oh, anytime. We'll be back after this. We are back with Spring, who actually works for Annie Jam, the company doing this. Spring, what's going on here today? Okay, Annie Jam is the Central Valley's premier anime convention. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what anime is, that are that it refers to Japanese animation, but in reality, it's grown to kind of encompass a whole genre of fandom that kind of crisscrosses over sci-fi and fantasy and American animation and other types of foreign film and pop culture. So what can we expect if, if someone wants to come to this thing next year or wants to be a part of it, what can they expect? Uh, pretty much every year Annie Jam has a few standards. We always have a cosplay competition. Cosplay is kind of a coined term for the words costume play. Uh, basically it's a costume contest and people will come dressed up as their favorite characters from different movies and shows. Uh, we usually have a good amount of bands performing. They usually perform in the genre of uh, Japanese rock, or in a, like in this case, we have a performer named Mari Watanabe, and she dresses up as a character known as Sailor Moon and performs for the audience. And what is the music that she has? Her music, she does a lot of covers. Uh, she'll sing songs from different shows, and she's really wonderful at interacting with the audience and trying to get them to sing along with her if they know the song. And so someone 
pays admission, comes in here and has access to like the music and all the stuff? We also offer video gaming and tabletop gaming for people who like to play anything from Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic the Gathering, those type of card games you play out. And uh, we also offer anime viewing so people can get a taste of some of the new shows and some of the old shows that have kind of made this whole thing very popular. Speaking of popular, did you realize how popular this thing is getting? Because I've seen it on buses, I've seen it everywhere. It's grown quite a bit in the last few years. Uh, I suspect a lot of that is due to more mainstream companies introducing the market, uh, such as Cartoon Network. They have a block called Toonami, which pretty much plays nothing but Japanese animation. So the mainstream public is getting a taste of this anime now. So you, this is happening in the Central Valley. Are, is your company from the Central Valley, or how, how does the company work? Annie Jam is owned by Antonio Agroso. He is the sole owner of the company, and it is the company itself is actually staffed by volunteers. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, we, we don't we don't get paid other than just for the love of the show. And why do you do this? I mean, you know, I talked to you yesterday. Um, you have a lot going on. You've been running around all morning, and it's it looks like you're having a lot of fun doing a lot of work. Why do you do it? Honestly, I'm not sure some days. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I, I like doing events and this happens to be a subject that I'm fond of. And, you know, I enjoy creating things that give people a good time. And are people coming from out of town as well? I, I, when I was walking over here, I noticed people crossing the street from the hotel. So you mentioned guests are coming in to the airport. Do a lot of people come from out of town? We have had quite a few people come from out of town. Most of our most of our fans who come in are from the California Central Valley area, but we have had people as far as Washington, and we even had people from London come out. London, yeah, as fans, they they weren't even guests. They they just came in from London to enjoy our, our convention. So next year, you think it's going to be bigger than this? It has been growing steadily every year since it started. So, uh, yeah, I suspect it will continue to grow. Can people find out more information from uh, the website, or where can I go to find out who's speaking, a schedule of events? We do have our schedule post posted online on our website. It's www.annie-jam.com, and you should be able to find most of our information there. We can also be found on Facebook. If you go to our website, there's a link to our Facebook page. So if I'm at home and I see this interview and I hear about this and I'm hesitant to come out, why do you think I should come out? I think it's a good thing to come out to just to see, even if you've never been to something like this, it's quite an experience. And we do try really hard to have something for everybody from the youngest of the kids who come through the door in their little princess costumes to the older crowd who is more into the more mature films of the animation genre. So if I'm wearing a costume, can I come in? You still have to pay to get in. It is $35 for the full weekend and $30 for a one-day pass. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That's all for this edition of San Joaquin Spotlight. We just heard from Spring, one of the people working hard making this event a success. Thank you to the volunteer crew that made this and every production possible. Tune in next week to a new edition.